Hi, good morning. Today we're going to be looking at another one of John Lavin's short fables from his book Blues Pedagogy, Educational Fables from the Classroom Testifying in 32 Choruses. Today's chorus that we'll be looking at is Chorus 6, Baldwin, Joyce, and the Nightmare of History. Jimmy Baldwin's essays and novels, revisited in in the recent Hollywood rage, If Beale Street Could Talk, spell out the blues. That's beautiful. That's also sad. Baldwin was an esthete. He knew how to find the beauty in a human story. The realities he revisited, of course, were tragic. Like jazz composers' treatments of African-American tone, poem, and song, Baldwin's writing is an emotional conversation with the ancestors that have flooded into the present. The tales are tortured. Lamentably, addressing past practices of lynching, African-American communities today face the same threats described by Harlem Renaissance founder Langston Hughes as a dream deferred and in the literary innovations that James Baldwin later accomplished. The stories are a dream gone bad. They reach back to Ida B. Wells and Frederick Douglass denouncing the arbitrary senseless executions of lynching of black people. In that tradition, the present moment's Black Lives Matter movement recalls the more recent accounts by Baldwin with brutality in the 1960s, and both past and present resonate in Beale Street's final scene of the protagonist. Fawny and his family living with an innocent black man's incarceration. Both as novelist and historicist, one of Baldwin's proclaimed ancestors is the Dubliner, another Jimmy, James Joyce. Written in exile, Baldwin's essay, Stranger in the Village, recounts his realization of the African past by way of Joyce's character. Stephen Dedalus, a young Irish school teacher who comments to his British employer on payday that history is the nightmare from which I am trying to awake by Ulysses. Baldwin quotes this sentence and reworks the scene from the Joyce novel in his essay to recall the anger he felt as school children in a Swiss village follow him, pointing and calling out the word for black in German, which reminds him of another city, other white children jeering and yelling almost the same word, and his feelings for the peculiarly dehumanizing history that is racism in the United States. James Joyce Baldwin told an array of interviewers in Paris, London, and New York, is one of my influences. Of course, Joyce had a style of continually, like a jazz composer, paying homage to the foremothers and forefathers by weaving into his narratives high allusions of Homer's epic sagas, as well as Irish ballad and verse and a proto-Indo-European collage of Sanskrit and countless indigenous oral traditions from around the globe. All configured in Joyce's writing to awaken us to the nightmares of confusion, loss and injustice that humans seek to give meaning in storytelling. Like Baldwin, Joyce did most of his writing in exile, escaping the former colony where he and most of his fictional characters were born. Like Baldwin, Joyce devoted a life to confirming contradictions inherent in his early life as a fervent Christian, and ultimately, 
unveiled inequality and inequality imposed by patriarchal systems of both church and government. Joyce's women contravene gender norms whose liberation results in his Ulysses being censored. Joyce's Molly Bloom recites a soliloquy expressing her sexuality, her rich sense of desire and her complexity. It was ruled pornographic. On a similar note of censorship and erasure, Baldwin's Giovanni's Room gave voice to a gay relationship whose intimacy and interracial tone conveyed a humane turning point of understanding and compassion that homophobic Anglo-American courts failed to tolerate and flatly barred from publication. A short story, much too short. As his teacher, I remember the assignment our class discussed the Friday prior to Latif's death, name change to Latif here and thus a fiction. I have to imagine. Before he left class that Friday, Latif and I spoke about his college applications and about the essay he was writing. I asked, so Latif, what are you thinking about? And he answered with a curious cryptic nod, my dreams. Was the question in Latif's mind when he died on Sunday? His dreams, or was he remembering a nightmare? That same Friday, reflecting about our semester's work, Latif and our class and I had talked about James Joyce's stories, Eveline, A Little Cloud, and counterparts, and James Baldwin's novel, Another Country. I had chosen the excerpt from Baldwin's essay, Stranger in the Village, where he mentions Joyce's character, Stephen, conjecturing that history is the nightmare from which he was seeking to awaken. I had asked the class to explain in an essay of their own how authors of fiction struggled to awaken from different kinds of nightmares, political, cultural, and historical. Then I also asked these students to express the history and the nightmares that they had witnessed and wished to recognize or awaken in their minds and hearts. That was Friday. Sunday, Latif was gunned down. On Sunday, did the nightmare cross Latif's mind as he passed away? Joyce's nightmare in Baldwin's has been at the core of how I, a white teacher in an African heritage community, recognize the empty chairs left by students whose violent deaths jeopardize surviving students' capacity to endure the trauma, the disorientation and the despair that threaten them. Sociologist Maria Kefalas told me that her research showed that African American men were more likely to die in our neighborhood of Philadelphia than if they were soldiers enlisted in an active war zone such as Afghanistan. On Monday, the young man sitting next to Latif's empty seat in class repeated like a mantra, I just don't have any more feelings left. I'm numb. This theme of history is the nightmare from which I am seeking to awaken. It's a very poignant, brutal, realization. History is the nightmare from which I am trying to awaken. It makes me think of many things in my past. My own childhood, my parents, my grandparents, my forefathers, my ancestors. 
What nightmare are you struggling to awaken from in your history? I'd be curious to know what you think about that story, as would John Lavin. And I would love to hear your comments in the comment section. If you liked this video, and if you'd like to see more like them, please hit the subscribe button, click that notifications bell, so you can always get the latest material as soon as we put it out there. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Again, thank you so much for joining me and John Lavin in essence, in spirit, for this read-along. Thanks again, and have a wonderful Monday. Bye-bye.